it's a great pleasure for me to introduce our guest speaker professor nagendra patak from iit roorkee professor patak is currently working as professor and head of electronics and communication engineering department indian institute of technology roorkee he has received btech degree in electronics and telecommunication engineering and mtech degree in electronics engineering from university of ilahabad in 1996 and 1998 respectively he completed his phd degree in the area of millimeter wave integrated circuits from iit delhi in 2005 prior to his current assignment at iit roorkee in 2006 he held the position of post doctoral research fellow at nrd super broadband research center tohoku institute of technology sendai japan as well as center for applied research in electronics which is care iit delhi professor patak is so member of 6g task force department of technology uh, telecommunication government of india ieee mtts technical committee on terahertz technology and applications and research advisor of nanyang academy of sciences singapore he is an associate editor to ieee axis and advanced electromagnetics he was invited by indian national academy of engineering which is inae for delivering invited talk in 9th national frontier of engineering symposium for young indian engineers held at jodhpur in june 2015 he is recipient of dst fast track research grant for young scientist in 2007 IETE India National Research Fellowship in the area of micro and radar engineering 2004 and 5 he has received he served as vice chairman of IEEE MTT society Uttar Pradesh chapter 2014 16 19 20 and also the faculty advisor of IEEE MTTS IIT Roorkee student branch from 2011 till date coordinator student activities and member executive committee of ieee uttar pradesh section professor patak has guided 13 phd theses and supervised more than 45 mtech dissertation in the area of rf through terahertz integrated circuits systems and sensors he has published more than 200 papers in reputed international journals and conferences he is also a co-author of a book which is crc press several book chapters and has one us patent to his credit professor patak's current research interests are integrated circuits for microwave millimeter wave sub millimeter wave and terahertz wireless communication non invasive sensors for transportation civil defense agricultural and medical applications and advanced functional materials for tunable rf through terahertz integrated circuits so i welcome you sir for this platform so kindly proceed for the talk thank you rajesh <coughs> so this is visible yes sir it is visible i'm switching off my video because of yes sir no problem yeah, no problem sir can you some... make yes sir can you make it full screen sir yeah this ppt yeah. yes sir perfect i hope uh... So good evening to all of you, and thanks, uh, Professor Rajesh, for giving me this opportunity to share research work done by my past students with the RF microwave uh, researchers. I hope mostly they may be from India, and if someone is from outside, it's fine. so uh, the topic uh, which i have selected for today's uh, discussion is 
spoof surface plasma polar returns and mainly i would like to explore the concept and how this can be applied if you are looking for designing high frequency integrated circuits or antennas or any other subsystem <coughs> content uh, i will follow uh, my presentation in a sequence so we will start uh, discussing motivation for going for this millimeter wave or terahertz technology then what are the research issues we are facing or we expect to face and what are the possible solution approach you know that there may be large number of possibilities but we are looking for few only and then uh, what is the concept of sspp and then some uh, application examples because uh, my two uh, doctoral students who completed their uh, phd thesis in past they have done extensive work in this area so i will discuss uh, outcome of some of their work in this discussion and finally the concluding remarks so when we talk about uh, rf to terahertz portion of electromagnetic spectrum i am especially emphasizing this terahertz portion because you know that uh, in india 5g is recently launched and uh, the research community has already moved towards 6g so research community is targeting or in or most of the international bodies they are targeting 2030 to launch 6g be it uh, united states or europe or other asian countries china or japan they have all started work in this direction so government of india has constituted a task force to frame the policy and decide how to proceed in that uh, direction and that task force was constituted in sometimes november or december 2021 and uh, meetings started from january and first report was submitted to uh, government uh, in april first week so the clear direction was given that how to proceed in that directions so that is one of the important part that uh, you can see from the rf spectrum when we talk about rf we usually uh, include a large frequency spectrum from say 9 kilohertz go up to 300 gigahertz and uh, when we talk about uh, terahertz basically uh, there is no clear cut definition from which frequency to which frequency uh, you can call it a terahertz portion but uh, usually sometimes you will find in literature that see 300 gigahertz to see terahertz that is terahertz or sometimes you will see that point c terahertz to uh, 10 terahertz and somewhere <laughs> you can also see that point three to uh, 30 terahertz is also terahertz but now this is a general consensus among researchers that we can uh, bring down to little lower and start from 0.1 terahertz to uh, 3 terahertz or to 10 terahertz and consider this as a terahertz portion so when you are going to consider uh, this terahertz band for communication applications or 6g applications don't think that that is going to be um, operated uh, somewhere in one terahertz or 500 gigahertz or 1.5 terahertz that is not going to happen it is basically somewhere more than 100 gigahertz so one of the candidate possible candidate is 140 gigahertz this is one possible candidate or uh, another candidate is uh, 330 gigahertz. So these frequency range less than 500 gigahertz frequency range, which are traditionally known as sub millimeter wave frequencies. 
So they are basically uh, now they are another term that is sub terahertz. So sub terahertz is one of the potential candidate to host 6G. And there are large number of challenge at each and every level. You will see. If you talk about uh, challenge in terms of devices, you will see that CMOS. What happens to CMOS after 200 or 300, 250 gigahertz? You will not get power uh, enough power from CMOS, so you have to find out alternative to that. And if you are using some other <laughs> approach to realize your chips, then cost is another problem because CMOS is preferred because the cost can be lowered. So there are challenge from the device side, challenge from the technology side, traditional waveguide technology, metallic waveguide technology, you cannot afford. So commercialization, if you have to go for commercialization, then you have to think about the cost. It means tremendous pressure upon researchers to find out novel technology which can, afford, can be afforded, affordable. You can afford it. <laughs> How society can afford it? Otherwise, for masses for which you are talking about the these uh, telecom sector, they may not be able to use it. So that is the challenging part. So this slide give you example that, uh, for example, for 5G, uh, the sub 6G, uh, 6 gigahertz bandage around 3.4 to 3.6 gigahertz, then several millimeter wave bands uh, they are opened in india also uh, somewhere in 26 or 27 gigahertz people are considering uh, to operate so bringing down system cost is one of the major challenge and this is the zone where rf engineers rf researchers they find a vital role so why people are looking towards terahertz wireless communication. As I had already explained uh, these couple of frequency range, etc. Because according to Ad Hom's law of bandwidth, the demand for it says that demand for bandwidth in wireless short range communication usually get doubled every 18 months. And this is the trend uh, they have seen since past 30, 40 years. So um, frequencies above 300 gigahertz, is, they are not currently allocated for communication applications, but you see that uh, in 6G people are exploring. Most of the uh, uh, firms, R&D firms operating in telecom sector or operating, uh, working in chip designing, they are now trying to find out solution. Unless there is a solution, you cannot think for a viable technology. So, <coughs> terahertz wireless links uh, exhibit an intrinsically short path length and line of sight communication. Commercial application of terahertz communication links would be a niche in which very high data rates are required over short distances on a multi point to point oblique multi point basis. So, obviously, <coughs> first and last mile problems they will be addressed by this terahertz communication system with gigabit or higher data rates could enable a wide variety of high bandwidth applications which includes wireless extensions of broadband access fiber optical networks wireless extension of <coughs> high speed wired local networks a wireless bridge between lower data rate wireless local network and high speed fiber optical networks high definition TV and broadband indoor Pico cells to handle high demand from a number of mobile users. Terahertz communication link is more directional. It is secure and have lower attenuation compared to infrared in certain atmospheric conditions, for example, fog. So time bearing fluctuations that is also observed uh, in the real reflective index of atmospheric path which leads to scintillation effects in wireless communication. For terahertz radiation, these scintillation effects, they are smaller than IR radiation. And because of that, terahertz 
provides longer links compared to wireless IR. So there have been relatively few studies of either analog or digital data transmission using terahertz radiation. This in part is due to the fact that required compact components for communication systems like planar integrated circuits, amplifiers, antenna array. So usually you will not get it above 140. So this is one of the reasons that things they are available up to 140, easily available, affordable. So 140 is one of the potential candidates for that 6G. Vast, so as I mentioned in the beginning that there is a vast research scope exists for developing compact ICs for terahertz frequency range. So what happens if you choose? So cell size will be very, very small, obviously in cellular communication. So what happens bandwidth? So propose bandwidth is proportional to carrier frequency, we know, but the coverage is inversely proportional to carrier frequency. While data rate per user, that is of the order of frequency to the power three bits per second. So communication data rate can be increased by using more bandwidth or enhancing signal to noise ratio. More bandwidth that is available around when you move towards millimeter wave or sub millimeter wave or sub terahertz, you get more bandwidth. So more bandwidth means possibility of high data rate that is possible. For a given distance received SNR signal, uh, received signal at high carrier frequency experienced more attenuation due to small antenna size and higher atmospheric absorption. Therefore, SNR is reduced. So, Increasing SNR is a major challenge. So those who are the communication um, system researchers, they can think about that, how to increase SNR. So for them, this is another problem. So where such high data rate that is needed? So you can see various scenarios where uh, data rate in excess of several GBPS or several hundred GBPS you are looking for, like one, 144 GBPS you need. So in, for example, you can see that medical applications, seamless, uh, uncompressed video transfer. So you can uh, take uh, help of any medical expert sitting uh, quite away from uh, the hospital where operation or surgery is going on and he can participate from remotely. So those things, uh, they need very uh, uh, high data rate. You can see uh, thing from here. So in order to handle that data rate, uh, you need a system uh, which can <coughs> afford this uh, high data rate. And uh, that is one of the reason that people are moving toward 5G or 6G or especially millimeter wave site or sub terahertz site. See from the Japan, Japan uh, Japan was much ahead in January 2014. So they formulated the regulation and they allocated a frequency, a frequency band, 120 gigahertz frequency band for some of the uh, commercial services and you can see that they have used center frequency 125 to 18 gigahertz bandwidth that was allocated so they have already taken a step so it's fine that um, you have a good opportunity of uh, being uh, because of high bandwidth uh, high data rate but what are the challenges what are the difficulties you will face if you are going to use uh, this uh, high very, very high frequency, millimeter wave or sub-millimeter wave frequency, or even terahertz, several terahertz, if you are going that. So what will happen? The major uh, difficulty you will face is through atmospheric loss and free space propagation loss. Because when you are moving towards higher frequency, atmosphere, plays a very crucial role. So you may have several, those who are attending uh, this seminar, they may have seen this at, at innovation at sea level 
in dv per kilometer versus frequency graph this is a uh, well known graph for rf researchers so and you can see that how atmosphere affects wave propagation so if there is a heavy rain so that is also whether a 50 millimeter per hour or light rain 5 millimeter per hour depending upon that how that is affecting then how uh, the water vapor h2 that is affecting attenuating our uh, signals electromagnetic wave so all is frequency dependent how oxy what is the effect of presence of oxygen molecule what is the pre uh, effect of presence of ozone molecule how carbon dioxide is affecting how fog is affecting so every constituent of atmosphere affects propagation of wave and uh, their overall effect that is not very simple so when you are planning uh, to have a uh, communication link and that link uh, unbroken communication link then you have to find out that how to overcome these uh, say yeah, effect of atmospheric effect and the losses so one uh, simple answer may be that you can send more power but you know that that is uh, not easy to have very very high power uh, and you can send it in to atmosphere because the uh, transmission of very high power in open atmosphere it is also having other difficulties and other uh, uh, so effects harmful effects so you have to find out some meaningful uh, and uh, say practically possible solutions so this data you can see that some mathematical uh, say calculation that is lost due to atmospheric rain uh, for example 60 gigahertz which is 27 db and 400 gigahertz so both 60 and 400 more or less they are 26 27 that is not going to affect but the required transmitted power at 60 gigahertz is 100 milliwatt but 400 gigahertz required only 4 milliwatt so this is very very interesting part <laughs> and because of that researchers they are uh, attracted towards this sub millimeter wave or sub terahertz frequency range because you don't require very high power you require low power so and uh, see uh, what happens uh, in the case for example the when you uh, calculate the free space propagation loss so then th this is a calculation that free space loss uh, in this case uh, if you calculate at 120 gigahertz uh, so it is 134 db for one kilometer right so but this 134 db uh, loss can be bring down to a level <laughs> 34 db provided you use an antenna of 50 dbi gain so a very very high gain antenna if you can design a very very high gain antenna then instead of using a very high power transmitter with the help of even with the help of a small power transmitter but with very high gain antenna you can achieve your goal because the space free space loss which is 134 db this can be bring down to 34 only you can compensate this huge loss with the help of very high gain antenna so where is the thrust thrust is that and towards the antenna designers they have to find out a solution if you can have then you can compensate that so so what are the research issues so next generation especially rf communication and sensor system they require miniaturized and reconfigurable components to reduce power consumption to reduce cost to reduce size and weight everything below 100 nanometer regime copper interconnects have major limitations for example signal and clock distortions are there attenuation obviously metal 
there are more attenuation so attenuation problem in any case you are going to face impedance matching issues are there cross talk issues are there power dissipation per unit area this problem arises wave reflection interconnect density each and everywhere you will see that there are so many problems if you are going below 100 nanometer energy what moore's law says you know that the well known for uh, transistor density gets doubled for every 18 months but the same trend is not applicable for copper interconnects so transmission lines are used so transmission lines or guiding structures they are not following moore's law they follow electromagnetic principles so you can reduce the size miniaturize the size of transistor but the interconnects of connecting lines they cannot be reduced in the same way so the size of the chip that is not only dependent upon solid state devices but it is also dependent upon the interconnects and that is causing major difficulty wave guides they provide an appropriate alternative but their dimensions cannot be reduced beyond a certain limit you know because all the wave guides they are <clears throat> they suffer because of the cut off conditions if you are operating below cut off the wave cannot be transmitted or signal cannot be transmitted through your guiding structure so you have to <laughs> follow <coughs> cut off conditions these are the well known uh, guiding guiding structures uh, you know uh, at lower frequency microwave frequency say mic micro strip line coplanar wave guide suspended micro strip line or suspended strip line so you are familiar with this and uh, these transmission lines and uh, you know that closed form expressions <laughs> expressions are there and you can easily use them but what happens if you try to use them at such a high frequency you cannot directly use because the models which are easily applicable and give accurate results at lower frequencies lower frequency means gigahertz frequencies microwave frequencies so these models however fail to reproduce the characteristics of planar transmission lines defined on substrates with thickness in the neighborhood of just a few microns for example when a metallic ground plane followed by an insulating dielectric layer is deposited on top of low resistivity silicon wafers the loss properties of the line are decoupled from those of the silicon wafer therefore circumventing its poor microwave property so this new dimensional regime does bring to the fore other deleterious phenomena so below 100 nanometer regime that is nano scale situation is worst wave guides or surface wave guides and you know that both they suffer from the cut off conditions they actually provide alternative solutions so uh, those uh, who are aware of uh, millimeter wave uh, systems and they may be knowing this is uh, one of the well known uh, guiding structures millimeter wave guiding structure that is the non radiative dielectric wave guide structure and how this non radiative dielectric wave guide structure that was derived it was derived from a below cut off wave guide right then up top and uh, bottom layer they are removed and this is a parallel plate wave guide but it is still below cut off and then a dielectric slab of a suitable dimension <laughs> is <laughs> inserted so that the wave propagation can be supported through this dielectric slab and outside it is below cut off so there is no radiation so both mathematical condition uh, they are fulfilled and uh, this is one of the popular guiding structure but it still this suffers from the dimensions because uh, we cannot propagate uh, if you reduce a uh, less than lambda not by uh, lambda g by 2 lambda g that is inside this guiding structure or inside this uh, dielectric uh, slab structure so 
So it means again you will land up in the same problem that size reduction is not under your control. So the question is, uh, is it possible to operate these surface waveguides below cutoff? That is, if A is less than lambda 0 by 2, right? A is less than uh, uh, lambda 0 by 2, is it possible to launch electromagnetic signal through this guiding structure? If, if that is possible, then you can miniaturize further. Otherwise, the size reduction that is not possible. So, if you try to find out through literature what are the possibilities, then you can see that there is one answer, and that comes uh, to the concept of plasmonics. So, but this is valid at optical frequencies, right? So, see <clears throat> what happens, uh, especially if you see the a dielectric slab or optical fiber and if you reduce the uh, size of the core and uh, if you reduce the size of the core of uh, say below cutoff level so then what happens instead of uh, confining the uh, energy within the core or guiding structure you see that most of the energy is uh, say spreaded outside the core or guiding region so that happens that is natural and this is the cutoff condition you see that this same thing happens in waveguides if you see what happens if you try to launch a signal when guiding structure is below cutoff then basically most of the energy that is not contained in guiding region so they are spreading outside but you want that uh, guiding region should contain significant amount of energy, most of the energy, and it guides. So there is a solution, and that solution exists in the case of, for example, gold nanowire, metal nanowire, so basically cylindrical metal nanowire, gold nanowire, and that is because of the concept of plasmonics. So in this case, you see that even if the size is reduced be, below cutoff, operated below cutoff guiding structure, is still wave is confined inside the guiding region. That is the beauty of this concept, plasmonics concept. So, decreasing the diameter of an optical fiber or the thickness of a guiding slab to zero cannot lead to subwavelength localization of the guided mode while in the case of metal nanowire it leads to subwavelength localization so that is possible provided uh, you have that situation but the concept of plasmonics by the theory uh, it exists at optical frequency because metal behave like a plasma at optical frequency Microwave or millimeter wave or terahertz frequency, they don't behave like a plasma. <laughs> so, if they don't behave like a plasma, then you will not get that effect. So, if you don't get that effect, then how you will confine that? That is a major challenge. So, for RF researchers, microwave researchers who work in the domain of millimeter wave or terahertz. Their major challenge is how to bring down this plasmonic concept from optical to terahertz or RF region. The metals commonly employed in the visible part of the spectrum for supporting SPPH, such as gold and silver, have significantly different properties in the RF to terahertz regime, which makes them less suitable for sustaining SPP at a flat interface. For below their plasma frequency, these materials have significantly larger negative real and positive imaginary part of the permittivity. More closely, they resembling a perfect electric conductor and because of that, they exhibit very poor confinement. And that is the reason SPP doesn't exist at microwave or 
millimeter the water art frequency it only exists naturally at optical frequency so then what you will do but there is a way so if you see the mathematics then you can find out that lack of confinement can be overcome using semiconductor in place of metals why because lower free carrier density cause its plasma frequency to fall in the terahertz band so you can see that this epsilon m epsilon m uh, is epsilon infinity minus omega p square divided by omega square i gamma omega so we are omega p square plasma frequency is n e square epsilon zero m n is the concentration e electronic charge so this n can be controlled you know that in semiconductors n can be externally controlled with the help of doping etc so if you can control n it means you can play with omega p but at terahertz the semiconductor based uh say plasmonic effect in semiconductors that is not very strong but that is possible so a lot of several groups they are trying to use this concept instead of using metals uh, where uh, novel metal for example silver or gold uh, in that case at optical frequency this is a natural phenomena but in semiconductors you can play with this omega p because omega p is a function of n and n can be controlled in semiconductor processes so it means omega p can be varied so it can be brought down at a desired frequency so with this uh, you can use this concept at even terahertz region what is the other possibility other possibility is that is metals whose surfaces are, has been textured so that the electric field effectively penetrates further into the metal side of the interface so this is another approach one <coughs> one approach is the semiconductor based approach where you are playing with omega p and the second approach is textured metallic surfaces spoofed metallic metallic surfaces where the texturing because that is the geometrical parameters and those geometrical parameters they are under the control of designers because omega p has been forced to be function of the geometrical parameters and once that is a function of geometrical parameter it can be brought down at a desired frequency right so that is the concept of ssp <laughs> so the natural uh, plasm plasmonic effect that is at optical frequency because at optical frequency metals novel metals for example silver or gold they behave like a plasma at microwave or at terahertz frequency they don't behave like a plasma so obviously you will not get uh, enough confinement and that effect as you observe at optical frequency but there is a way so either using semiconductors or using spoofed surfaces or textured surfaces you can get similar effect so artificially engineered surfaces one dimensional two dimensional you can achieve the same effect why plasmonics so basically this is electronic plus photonic integrals so this is a technology that speeds electromagnetic wave into mini school structures new generation of super fast computer chips and ultra sensitive molecular detector embody the strongest point of both optical and electronic data transfer data can be transmitted as fast as an optical fiber and along a metal wire as tiny as in modern microchip so plasmonics may be able to unleash the 
full potential of nano scale functionality and became the next wave of chip scale technology. Surface plasma. So there are certain terms that you have to keep in mind. Surface plasma polaritons. They are unique electromagnetic waves at optical frequency that propagate at the interface of metal and dielectric. SPPs are a form of electromagnetic excitation whose amplitude decay exponentially into the medium between the interface at which SPP exists. See this figure in this direction or this direction. So interface region is this region. This is the interface. When I will uh, show you with the help of uh, 3D diagram, you will see in a better way. So interface, if you move away this side, this medium, or this medium, you see that the amplitude is decaying. <clears throat> so SPP, they are product of the coupling between electromagnetic waves in the dielectric medium and plasma oscillations in metals. So you can see from this figure. So this figure basically uh, you can understand in a better way. So this is metal. So metal uh, uh, dielectric permittivity of a metal that is defined with the help of Drude model, Drude Lorange model that is used. So epsilon one is given as one minus omega p square divided by omega square. Then there is a dielectric region that is epsilon two, which is epsilon d, and uh, See, this is x direction, this is y direction, and this is z direction. So, uh, there is an interface between dielectric and metal. So, at the interface region, so this, this diagram, this diagram, you can see your this diagram, this basically refers this interface region. So, interface. Uh, plane is x y plane so this is x y this is referring x y plane this is x y plane where interface exists surface plasma modes are in general characterized by appropriate longitudinal and transverse electric and magnetic field components and coupling with photons is thus possible among the attractive aspects of surface plasmons, a primary interest is the possibility to concentrate light in sub-wavelength regions and overcoming the diffraction limit of traditional optics. See, in optics, uh, people use diffraction limit. And so if you go through the literature, sometimes you get confused. But uh, for RF engineer's point of view, you can think that diffraction limit is similar to your cutoff conditions in the waveguides, right? So usually below diffraction limit, wave propagation is not possible. Just you see that below cutoff, no guiding structure support wave propagation. But because of this plasmonic effect, there is extraordinary wave propagation is possible when the size is less than diffraction limit or less than the cutoff condition that below cutoff wave propagation is possible so that so wherever diffraction limit is uh, referred in literature please remember that is similar to your cutoff condition in electromagnetics especially rf microwave engineers they are more familiar with the cutoff uh, conditions rather than diffraction limit while optics people they prefer that nomenclature <clears throat> so case uh, we are talking about ideal metal dielectric interface for example two semi-infinite media typically a metal and a dielectric separated by a planar interface taken in the xy plane we are referring this particular figure so i hope you can keep in mind uh, for simplicity the dielectric function epsilon one of the metal is supposed to be local that is independent on the momentum transfer and the function of silent two of the dielectric is supposed to be constant in the frequency that is momentum region of practical interest 
now to establish under which condition and electromagnetic excitation may propagate along the surface z is equal to zero again see z is equal to zero is the interface so this this <coughs> interface region so interface of dielectric and metal so that is the z is equal to zero so we will try to find out uh, that what is the condition under which this uh, propagation is possible that is spp mode surface plasma polyton mode exists and it propagates and in that case <coughs> fields dumped away both in positive and negative z direction so that you can see here the metal very quickly decaying while in the case of dielectric little more so waves they are confined so maximum say field strength is confined near the surface region interface region <clears throat> so this is just the mathematics uh, you can go through that mathematics but uh, that is very important in order to explain how uh, this particular mode exists and what are the conditions so i will quickly cover this part so a surface plasmon propagating along the interface in the xy plane must be accompanied by a component of electric field normal to the surface because the surface polarization charge so one thing you have to keep in mind that in the case of metals especially only tm polarized wave transverse magnetic polarized wave can excite this particular mode tm polarized incident wave can excite this spp mode surface plasma polariton mode if the incident wave is te polarized it cannot excite that so but you will wonder that what happens in the case of graphene graphene you will see that both te and tm they can excite spp so obviously uh, these fields in equation number one they must satisfy maxwell's equation and appropriate boundary condition as you do in most of the uh, electromagnetic problems so of Maxwell's equations in the absence of external forces and for non-magnetic material, same as divergence of D is equal to zero, divergence of B is equal to zero, then curl of E is equal to minus del B by del T, and then curl of B uh, or curl of H is equal to uh, this uh, uh, del del E by del T, some uh, epsilon, so del D by del T, some <coughs> minor changes or notational changes are there so that you can handle easily so we begin to simplify the parameters entered in entering in equation one taking proper account of the boundary conditions so requirements that components of electric and magnetic fields parallel to the surface are continuous so that gives you so e1x is equal to e2x and b1y is equal to b2y where q1 is equal to q2 please remember at optical frequency we are defining metal with the help of permittivity dielectric function where they are not perfect metals they are not perfect electric conductor rather they are behaving like a plasma where we can penetrate inside the medium that you have to keep in mind while at microwave or even terahertz frequency it behaves like a perfect metal so wave cannot penetrate inside that but in plasma that is possible so dielectric functions they are used dielectric uh, functions so they are used to define metal so using those these conditions you can uh, write down or simplify those equations so continuity of the normal component of displacement field so from the first of the maxwell's equation to applied so little uh, 
say simplification that gives you a surface plasmon uh, condition. So that is compatibility relation and that relation is equation number six, which says epsilon one divided by K one plus epsilon two divided by K two must be equal to zero. So we have satisfied the boundary conditions and vanishing divergence of the field. We have now to consider the Maxwell's equation three with the curl operators. Momentarily, however, we consider the conditions of occurrence of surface plasmon when retardation effects are ignored. That is when the speed of light is allowed to become infinitely large and the curl of the field is set to zero. With this assumption, you can see that curl of E1 is equal to zero that simplification give you k1 is equal to q and similarly k2 is equal to q so therefore for non-retarded surface plasmon condition epsilon 1 plus epsilon 2 is equal to uh, identically equal to 0. to so consider for instance the interface between a metal and a dielectric with dielectric function epsilon 1 is equal to 1 minus omega p square divided by omega square while epsilon 2 is epsilon d epsilon d is equal to 1 in case of vacuum so from the condition 7 the non-retarded surface plasmon mode is possible when 1 minus omega p square divided by omega square plus epsilon d is equal to identically equal to 0 it means omega s is equal to omega p divided by square root of 1 plus epsilon d in the case of vacuum surface plasmon resonance is omega s which is equal to omega p divided by square root of 2. We pass now the proper account of the retardation effect due to the finiteness of the speed of light because speed of light is not infinite. So it is finite. So when you put that condition back, so consider first the equation 3, take the curl of both members and use the second. So this is just a simplification so that you know last equation applied to the electric field in equation number four that gives you q square that is equal to k1 square plus epsilon 1 by c square omega square and q square that you can simplify as k2 square uh, plus epsilon 2 uh, by c square omega square so with further simplification you get uh, the basic compatibility relation for surface plasmon that is equation 10 which is q square that is equal to omega square divided by c square epsilon 1 epsilon 2 divided by epsilon 1 plus epsilon 2. in the case of metal dielectric interface we have that real values of q omega are possible for frequencies in the interval omega greater than zero but less than omega s both numerators and denominators are negative and the interval omega greater than omega p if both numerator and denominator they are positive so that is from equation number 10 so using 10 and equation number 9 the damping parameters controlling the spatial extent of the electromagnetic field in the two media so they can be written as k1 square that is equal to omega square by c square minus epsilon 1 square divided by epsilon 1 plus epsilon 2 and k2 square that is equal to omega square by c square minus epsilon 2 square divided by epsilon 1 plus epsilon 2. Thus k1 and k2 they are real and positive parameters under the condition epsilon 1 plus epsilon 2 less than 0 and they become arbitrarily large for epsilon 1 plus epsilon 2 equal to 0 meaning that the electromagnetic fields are confined to delta z like feet at z is equal to 0 for the surface plasmon mode of frequency omega s around this energy a strong concentration of electromagnetic field near the interface is possible so in the particular case of surface between a metal and a dielectric the dielectric function 8 and equation 10 this you can write so q square that is equal to omega square by c square epsilon d omega square minus omega p square epsilon d plus 1 omega square minus omega p square so the same equation solved in terms of q2 gives for the dispersion curve of the surface plasmon localized around the interface the this is this is the expression dispersion relation so you can see when you plot 
ओमेगा एज ए फंक्शन ऑफ क्यू के ओमेगा क्यू वर्स इज क्यू यू सी दैट सो दिस इज ओमेगा एस दिस इज ए लाइट लाइन एंड दिस इज द सरफेस पोलाइटन कर्व सो डिस्पर्सन कर्व ऑफ द सर्फेस प्लाज्मा पोलाइटन एट द इंटरफेस बिटवीन ए मेटल विद द प्लाज्मा फ्रीक्वेंसी ओमेगा पी टेन इलेक्ट्रॉन बोल्ट एंड ए डायलेक्ट्रिक मीडियम विद एफ साइल एंड डी दैट इज इक्वल टू टू द फ्रीक्वेंसी ऑफ द नॉन रिटार्टेड सर्फेस प्लाज्मा मोड इज ओमेगा एस दैट इज इक्वल टू ओमेगा पी डिवाइडेड बाई अंडर रूट एफ साइल एंड डी प्लस वन द डैश लाइन डिनोट द डायलेक्ट्रिक लाइट सो सो लाइट लाइन दैट इज इन लिटरेचर यू विल सी दैट मोस्टली दे आर सेंग दैट दैट इज लाइट लाइन नो प्रोपागेशन इज पॉसिबल इफ ओमेगा इज ग्रेटर देन और इक्वल टू ओमेगा एस बट लेस देन और इक्वल टू ओमेगा पी नो लोकलाइजेशन अराउंड द सर्फेस इज पॉसिबल इफ ओमेगा इज ग्रेटर देन ओमेगा पी सो सो सर्फेस प्लाज्मास एंड सर्फेस पोलाइट्रांस फॉर्म एट मेटेलिक डायरेक्ट्रिक सर्फेसेज दे आर क्वाजी पार्टिकल्स ओरिजिनेटेड बाई कलेक्टिव ऑसिलेशन ऑफ कंडक्शन इलेक्ट्रॉन्स कपल्ड विद द इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक फील्ड ऑफ लाइट तो कलेक्टिव इलेक्ट्रॉनिक एक्साइटेशन एट मेटेलिक सर्फेसेज एंड मोर जनरली ऑन पैटर्ड मेटेरियल्स मेटेलिक नैनो पार्टिकल्स एंड अदर मेसोस्कोपिक सिस्टम दे ओपन द पॉसिबिलिटी टू कंसनट्रेट एंड मैनिपुलेट लाइट विद इंटरेस्टिंग एप्लीकेशन इन सर्फेस कैरेक्टराइजेशन एंड सेंसर एंड इन नैनो स्केल फोटोनिक डिवाइस सो अगेन यू कैन रीविजिट द डिस्पर्सन डायग्राम ऑफ एस पी पी so this uh this is the equation 1 so basically kx and kz i i hope you remember the uh, first figure <clears throat> so here you can see that this omega was a real part of k kx so omega p then uh this line is omega p divided by square root of 1 plus epsilon d so <laughs> This is radiative mode if epsilon m dash is greater than zero. So both k x and k z they are real. So if both k x and k z they are real, so this is radiative mode. If k x is imaginary and k z is real, then quasi bound modes. And if k k x is real and k z is imaginary, then bound mode. So basically this. bound mode they are the spp mode so you can see um, here omega divided by omega p normalized uh, frequency and uh, voltage kc by omega uh, omega not so uh, uh, kc by omega p and then you can see that uh, this graph the spp dispersion curve <coughs> So SPP, they are found in infrared and optical frequencies. They don't exist naturally at terahertz or microwave. At low frequency metals, they be because they behave like perfect electric conductor. So electric field vanishes inside the metal. Plasma oscillations and SPP could not be supported in terahertz and microwave frequency. So as I mentioned at the beginning, before discussing the mathematics, while how you will realize the same thing in terahertz or millimeter wave or microwave frequencies so then the solution is provided with the help of spoof or textured surfaces so this was the first paper by jb pendry uh, <laughs> published in science which says that mimicking surface plasmons with structured surfaces so they proved that spp like modes called spoof surface plasma on photons could be supported in the lower frequency bands whose performance can be designed at will through changing the geometrical parameters of the surface structures so spps are uh, sspps are made possible with plasmonic meta materials which can be created by introducing periodic defects or structures on metallic surfaces such as a perforated metallic surface for example if you see this 
so then uh, this is the dotted one this is the light line and this is the surface of spp mode dispersor curve and uh, for this 1d corrugated metallic surface uh, dispersion relation that was derived uh, say kx is kx square c square that is given as omega square plus 1 divided by omega p square minus omega square 64 a to the power 4 omega to the power 4 divided by pi to the power 4 d to the power 4 so here omega p that is plasma frequency and uh, this a and d they are geometrical parameters so kx is the wave number of sspps uh, along the interface and omega p is plasma frequency c0 velocity of light in vacuum a and d basically they determine a and d what is a see this is the a and d is the period d is the period so since geometrical parameters they are determining the wave numbers or say dispersion relation so it means if you change geometrical parameter you can also play with the uh, occurrence so plasma or cutoff frequency you see that in equation 3 that is a function of pi c divided by a square root of epsilon h mu h so a h part omega p is a function of a it means omega p can be controlled with the help of geometrical parameter for 1D geometry of SSPP structure, you can see that equation 4 kx square that is equal to k0 square 1 plus d square by p square tan square k0 h. So again, this is a function of d, p and h. So, so this is a d, this is h, this is p, all are geometrical parameters. So it means uh, this wave number that is a function of geometrical parameter so for k0 h greater than 0 but less than pi y2 parallel propagating wave vector in x direction ky will be a real number and ky is greater than k0 so asymptotic frequency that is omega p will be given by pi c divided by 2h thus sspp wave is slower than light wave in phase parallel wave vector ky is proportional to group height h that is as h increases the kx become larger which means sspp wave travels slowly but confined more tightly to the corrugated metal surface so this uh, these uh, relations basically uh, prove that sspp exists on corrugated metallic surfaces and the plasma frequency uh, that is a function of the uh, geometrical parameter of the textured uh, or corrugated structure and because of that since you can play with the geometrical parameters you can play with the omega p right so uh, you can um, bring down to any frequency where you want uh, to have that effect so uh, SSPP uh, confinement and everything that is similar to your actual plasmonic mode, SPP mode. So, SPP and SSPP would lead to a conclusion that both SPP and SSPP behave in a similar manner, even though their origins are not exactly the same. Their, their origin is different, but their behavior is same. And since you are able to control the occurrence of uh, this uh, say omega p with the help of geometrical parameters so it means uh, the spp effect uh, which was not possible at microwave or millimeter wave or terahertz is possible with the help of this spooped or textured surfaces <clears throat> so let us have some comparison that uh, uh, what is the decay rate of electromagnetic wave uh, so and how confinement uh, more confinement is possible uh, in this case so these figures they basically give the comparison so 
so this is a slow basically this is a slow wave transmission line <coughs> so if you see uh, this b and c the so basically if you compare so this is a generalized model of spp in the transmission line of this generalized model so a spoof spp transmission line so this is a spoof transmission line and uh, near field distribution for b conventional micro strip line so th this is uh, confinement in conventional micro strip line and this is the confinement in spoof spp transmission line so see wave is highly confined inside the structure while if you use a simple micro strip line so wave is spreading outside your guiding structure so why this is happening because what we are doing we are increasing ky ky increases it means alpha t <coughs> become larger it means the electromagnetic field decay faster it means it lead to more electromagnetic confinement What about the mutual coupling and crosstalk? They will obviously get reduced because this is more confined the structure. So coupling, less coupling, so less coupling, less crosstalk. That is obvious in comparison to that similar metallic lines. So see, uh, this is practically uh, how it looks like a slow wave uh, spoof. Uh, transmission line and uh, they have measured some so this this was published in IEEE transaction in 2016 so this comparison you can find from there some other SSPP structures you can see that uh, how it looks like uh, the wave guiding uh, elements consist of an EG to manufacture periodic chain of metallic box shaped elements uh, protruding out of a metallic surface which are called as dominion array you can see people have started uh, so with a different shape some periodicity uh, but slowly uh, they have moved towards the planar structures <clears throat> so these are few examples and you can find them in literature these are few other conformal uh, structures that uh, these periodic uh, say is spoof structure they are printed and and you can see that wave is highly confined inside the structure so nothing is going outside the structure so this is another one <laughs> a few more from the literature so uh, after this uh, basic concept and uh, how it looks like so let us talk about how these uh, spoof surface plasmon polytrons so sspp structures how they are developed how they are correct what are the characteristics so if you go uh, for the design of your own so sspp transmission line then what you will do how you will start so everything starts with the unit cell you introduce change in unit cell then entire structure will get changed so the first thing is you have to design a suitable unit cell so these works they are done by my own students so uh, just you will see that how it looks like different type of unit cells they tried like um, four unit cells type of unit cells that is shown here and some of the things uh, which are common so that is mentioned here that what simulator they have used and what are the material properties they are using microwave frequency or what their heart frequency so different unit cell designs, uh, some dimensions in millimeter wave and uh, 
they are mentioned here and depending upon whether it is a uh, microwave structure or millimeter wave structure or uh, terahertz structure the size will get changed but um, uh, see <coughs> important factor is a suitable unix cell is important so different type of uh, unit cells here you can see that most of the dimensions they are in micron for terahertz so this is the um, comparison of uh, dispersion characteristics at microwave frequency of different unit cells so three unit cells we have considered so this straight line is the light line right and uh, in reference to this there are three different uh, uh, unit cells they are considered as it is observed that cutoff frequency and dispersion characteristics can be tailored by changing geometrical parameters lower cutoff and more confinement you can achieve so um, You can see here uh, different uh, unit cells uh, and their dispersion characteristics. So this is the propagation length, propagation length of uh, SSPP mode, surface plasma mode. Uh, that is calculated and uh, you can see that that is very very small so that basically gives you the confinement how you find out propagation length so that propagation length is basically computed from alpha i hope you remember the propagation constant when you write propagation constant that is alpha plus minus j beta right in usual so alpha so that alpha that attenuation constant from there this propagation length is defined the slow wave characteristics group and phase velocity they are also plotted here you can see here this is the group velocity and this is the phase velocity so phase velocity is omega by ky and group velocity is d omega by dky KY is the wave vector of SSPP cell and the uh, this is given by this relation that for 1D uh, corrugated structure that was already defined. So group velocity uh, that is derived like this as the SSPP uh, wave vector KY increases the group velocity start decreasing and thus SSPP structure supports slow wave propagation. <clears throat> So similar trend has been observed at terahertz frequency. So whether it is at microwave frequency or millimeter wave frequency or terahertz frequency, everywhere you will see that same trend. So it means the phenomena which was only possible at optical frequency can now be used even at microwave frequency or terahertz frequency. Why that is possible only because of the controlling geometrical parameter, making uh, plasma frequency as a function of this uh, geometrical parameter. And because of that, this structure is very, very important because you can use the same effect. You can enhance confinement, wave, wave confinement at any desired frequency. <clears throat> So how you can convert for you know, convert convert conversion of QTEM mode to SSPP mode? Basically, how you will launch practically QTEM quasi TEM mode if you are going to launch to a micro strip line. So how you will do that? This uh, next uh, few slides talks about that. So this is a mode converter. So mode conversion uh, that is possible with the help of momentum matching <clears throat> so you have to match the momentum so that uh, you can transfer 
energy from one structure to other structure. So here you can see with the help of geometrical parameter, a straight line is light line and you have to match your <laughs> SSPP um, dispersion relation with the light line. So by changing, introducing the change, you can do that and that that is basically nothing but the matching as close you want to reach as close as possible to the light line so wave vector is gradually deviating from micro strip line and cutoff frequency becomes lower as conversion height grows from h1 to h8 step by step so with the help of that the matching that is achieved so you can see the same concept that is used and impedance that is found. And uh, this, uh, you can see that at various locations, how, how the confinement looks like. Because initially here, this, this is a quasi TEM mode, right? See, uh, Initially, this is a quasi TEM mode, right? Uh, this is a quasi TEM mode, uh, and this quasi TEM mode is slowly getting converted into uh, this SPP mode. Hmm. But I'm, I'm in a lecture. So, so, please don't disturb. Don't disturb. So, uh, slowly the mode, quasi TM mode, is getting converted into uh, this uh, S SSPP mode. So, effect of geometry uh, parameter on dispersion curve at uh, microwave frequency so because we experimentally uh, developed structures at microwave frequency and tested also so the same thing uh, you can see here so terahertz frequency the same thing was reported so you can see uh, how the metal conductivity uh, that is affecting cutoff frequency so here you can see that uh, for gold for silver for copper a perfect electric conductor you can see that um, cutoff frequency get varied so transmission line of uh, this is another important uh, part of any circuit of uh, subsystem design so you can see that this, this is one of the um, transmission line having uh, input output uh, say transition then grouped stepped impedance uh, regulator cells are there this group spp unit cell is there this is the matching section so again uh, unit cells they are first analyzed and then dispersion curve and after that the matching was introduced and you can see that for the entire transition back to back transition this is the, uh, the scattering parameter reflection and transmission coefficient magnitude of reflection and transmission coefficient you can see experimental verification was carried out at microwave frequency in laboratory so this is sma connector SMA connector. So you are launching TEM wave. So here in micro strip, so this is quasi TEM mode that is started propagating. And then you are slowly converting into surface wave mode that is that uh, this SSPP mode. And <laughs> you can see that transition. For uh, this is another, uh, say, mode converter that is designed. So this is for terahertz. 
and this is for microwave frequency a different type of unit cell is used this is another uh, unit cell you can see different type of unit cell they have attempted experimentally as well as uh, uh, in through simulation full wave simulation and you can see the field confinement in different structures so you can observe that tightly confined through the structure when it is sspp mode one mode is converted initially you can see that very poor confinement because mode is not a SP, a sspp mode but once it is sspp mode for example in d you can see then more confinement so different type of structures uh, they are analyzed so to know uh, which one is better then this is a cpw to a spoof spp uh, transition <clears throat> so in this case again uh, mode converters they have designed and you can see uh, that microwave frequency uh, this is uh, transition back to back transition and then uh, this is a, with the help of uh, ground regulator uh, that is designed. So this work was reported by uh, Mr. Uh, Kiani uh, Nejad uh, in MTT. So this was taken from there. Then losses there in light, they spook SPP transmission lines. So the losses are conversion loss, then transmission loss, then ohmic losses. So conversion loss is due to the mode conversion section. Transmission loss is because of uh, it includes radiation or leaky loss and dielectric loss, while ohmic loss is because of the lossy dielectric substrate. <coughs> then this is a uh, simulated uh, uh, parameter S21 and you can see that it's quite good. This is another one to study the ohmic losses in our own structure. So they have find out that how uh, it is affecting the magnitude of transmission coefficient <coughs> with the help of number of unit cell. So uh, this SSPP structures they are used to develop certain subsystems uh, which are very common in RF uh, uh, RF systems. For example, one of the important part is the bandpass filters. So various bandpass filters, uh, they were designed and they are reported. Uh, so four type of bandpass filters, I will quickly uh, go through them. So so broadband bandpass filter, uh, they are designed and basic uh, this is structure, so first you know that is spoof SSPP transmission line, feeding element, is spoof SSPP transmission line, so extracting purpose or feeding purpose. And then uh, unit cells are there, stepped impedance resonator, or uh, unit cell is spoof SSPP unit cell that is used. <coughs> and uh, then uh, this even mode, odd mode analysis of a uh, single uh, unit cell that was carried out and you know that these are the results of say reflection and transmission coefficients near field distribution you can see that very tight confinement at terahertz spurious response separation say 60 db below so that is quite good microwave frequency the same thing that is designed and you can see the performance measured and simulated response so 30 db rejection level that is obtained for this filter so reconfigurable bandpass filters uh, so this is a t-shaped uh, resonator that is used in this case so again even mode odd mode analysis i will not cover because i am assuming that you know how to go for even mode odd mode analysis of such a structure so vertical and horizontal length or uh, effect variations that is so 
measurement and simulated results they are compared in this case bandwidth reconfigurable structure they are also considered so uh, this is again at microwave frequency you can see that uh, you can control uh, rising or falling uh, edge center frequency reconfiguration that is possible So this is another another filter. So fabricated uh, and measured results. Uh, so this is again fabricated prototype and measured results. The filter, so reconfiguration. So you can uh, develop the tunable filter as well. So this is another filtering structure cross shaped is a unitor based filtering structure so this is the filter structure and two um, such resonators gap coupled resonators they are used and their analysis again even more odd mode analysis that is applicable and uh, Then a ring uh, resonator based structures they were also analyzed and tuning you can achieve so in this case you can see here uh, this is a spoof structure this is another tunable one so directors they are used for tuning purpose resonance condition sector that is derived so this is fabricated prototype. So this is another fabricated prototype. So different type of uh, filters they are designed. Then amplifiers they are also uh, designed. So in this case the loss compensation was uh, done with the help of an uh, amplifier chip. So here you can see that uh, a chip is used and uh, then uh, you can see that uh, whatever loss we were getting um, there are some gain uh, gain is possible so this is for mmic amplifier and then this is ring resonator filtering structure so um, after amplifier you can see that some amplification you are getting <clears throat> gain like uh, 5.5 dB you are getting at microwave frequency the measurement was carried out in the laboratory and you can see that instead of uh, loss in such loss you are getting gain then uh, SSPP based uh, DRA they are reported so SSPP transmission line fed DRA so this I have taken from uh, literature so you can see that how SSPP they are used to feed the electric resonator so this is this is the prototype photograph radiation pattern etc that that is quite obvious uh, for you then this is another sspp based antenna so you can see that how sspp concept is used the feeding purpose and then you can see here this is the result for this antenna designed antenna this is radiation characteristics and this is uh, basically at microwave frequency so you can see the prototype I think this is major radiation pattern. So, uh, a special thanks to my former uh, PhD students, Rahul and Nidhi. And uh, they were with me and they uh, did uh, uh, a lot of work uh, in this area during their doctoral study. So, basically, if we, uh, we conclude uh, this talk, uh, you can see that uh, SSPP with the help of SSPP now it is possible 
that we can go ahead with the design of very very miniaturized components especially when we are looking at uh, millimeter wave or terahertz frequencies and we are also concerned with the uh, confinement so those issues can be easily handled uh, with the help of this particular concept which was not possible otherwise because plasmonic effect that is not present at these frequencies but because of this textured metallic surfaces we can play with uh, this uh, plasma frequency because plasma frequency is a function of geometrical parameter so we can achieve the same level of confinement as it was possible uh, in optical frequencies so i would like to stop here and i would like to listen from uh, other side that if they have any doubt or any uh, questions they are most welcome thank you very much sir uh, participants uh, do you have any question you can uh, ask directly to the speaker or you can type also so whatever you prefer Um, good evening, sir. Is it okay if I ask related to ultra wideband antenna? So, uh, let me first listen your question only then I can answer. Okay, actually, I am currently working on a project uh, where I am designing an ultra wideband antenna from range 3.1 gigahertz to 10.6 gigahertz. For now, I have only just designed using some uh, horn patch, uh, using the uh, horn shape uh, antenna. I, I wanted to know, like, I'm doing my MTech project, so I wanted to know, know, like, in what application I can use that ranged antenna. See, uh, your, how your question is linked with this uh, application of spoof, because you want to know about ultra wideband. So, is there any design issues you are facing? No, uh, I have achieved the like uh, uh, return loss from uh, minus 10 dB in that range. I just mm. wanted to know like whether this ultra wideband antenna, like almost many of the projects have come around for the ultra wideband. So whether my project will be a something novel design or not, I wanted to know like whether it is trending not or not. See, see uh, whatever uh, problem you are given, so yes. it depends upon mostly in engineering application uh, specific problems are there right right yes. so uh, you may be designing a system where uh, you need a very broadband antenna right, okay? right yes so that's why you are uh, given that problem so question is that which application you are considering ultra wideband that is fine ultra wideband is uh, from say uh, here uh, three point uh, uh, starting from 3.1 or 2 to goes to the 10 point something yes. and uh, it also uh, near 60 gigahertz seven, 7 or 8 gigahertz frequency that is allocated there also so there also people use the same term ultra wide broadband but the problem is uh, for uh, which specific application you are considering if you are going for a wireless communication, you know that uh, in no real wireless communication, you will get that large frequency. Okay. Okay. If you are uh, going from three to ten, so large number of frequencies they are used by uh, uh, other, uh, used for other applications. For example, uh, if I am not wrong, uh, yes. you may be knowing two point uh, say uh, this five gigahertz LAN is there. So 5 gigahertz LAN 5.2 to uh, 5.35, that is one frequency for local area network. Then 5.7 uh, 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 gigahertz LAN is there. Then 5.9 gigahertz uh, ITS is there, intelligent transport system is there. So there are several frequencies which are allocated for various other services. So uh, it's fine that uh, uh, 
you can have a very very broadband antenna which operates from 3 to 10 gigahertz but uh, unless there is a, some practical uh, say application or a practical a specific application for which you are designing so it is very difficult to uh, comment right yes yes so because see if you uh, if you go for 60 gigahertz uh, frequency like 57 to 64 right and somewhere uh, 59 to 66 so for all uh, different regions and uh, different frequency they are allocated so these are also say used for indoor applications uh, where the uh, signal will not travel uh, beyond your room so uh, and that frequency is basically uh, license free band 60 gigahertz band is license free band so if the license free band is there and you want to use that within your room without disturbing others then for that application you can use and what could be the application the application is that you want to transfer data from your uh, for example one computer to other computer you can uh, easily do that without disturbing anyone else but if you are going for commercial purpose where other users are there then uh, there is definitely a trouble right so yes. unless a specific applications they are mentioned uh, then it is otherwise very difficult yeah but standards are there uwb standards are there which say that this entire band is called uwb band but whether commercial activity is possible or not, that will depend upon the licensing, right? Right, yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, thank you, sir. Sir, uh, this uh, SSP structure uh, looks somewhat similar to a periodic structure that is called FBG in fiber theory. Some of the prototypes that you shown. Yeah, most of the prototypes, uh, uh, what word you are using? FPG. FBG, fiber grating. Yeah, it looks like that, uh, but basically uh, the difference occurs in terms of modes, electromagnetic modes. Yeah, the, uh, again, sir, so that mode you talk, uh, like in wavewise we had like TE and TM modes, uh, like here in SSP, what kind of mode we call them? See, SSPP basically, uh, these modes, they are excited with the help of TM waves that I mentioned, if you remember. Transverse magnetic polarized wave can excite this SSPP mode. So there is a clear difference between uh, the, uh, uh, modes uh, propagating in a dielectric waveguide, right? And mode hmm. propagating in a SSPP or SPP waveguide. Mm -hmm. The difference is that uh, in in the case of any dielectric waveguide, field is mm -hmm. confined inside the guiding structure, right? Mm -hmm. In an optical fiber or uh, let me see. Yeah. Because uh, if if this is a core, for example, if this is a core in any waveguide, you see that optical guides or slab everywhere, most of the energy is confined here, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. But what happens in the case of this SSPP, most of the energy mm -hmm. is confined at the surface only this mm -hmm. this is the major difference mm -hmm. and this mode can only be excited with the help of tm in in uh, polarized or tm tm wave so only tm wave can excite this mode while in the case of graphene it is seen that t and tm both that is possible but otherwise this is tm while in the because, case of any other dielectric guides, there is no such restriction. You can have any, whether TE or TM, both are possible. Yes, is sir. it clear? Yes, sir. Yeah. 
So when analyzing, please remember this difference because in any gui dielectric guide, whether TE TE or TM, so mostly field this maximum confinement is inside the guiding region, while here it is at the surface. When you move away from the surface, it is quickly decaying. So energy is localized near the surface. And that localization is possible because you have an incident wave that is polariton, right? That is a sinusoidal wave. You, you know that it is changing its uh, a positive negative. And then it is interacting with oscillating electrons of metal, right? So when they are interacting, this particular surface mode get excited. Any other question? Um, so whether HFS is software or CST microwave, which is like good for designing the antennas. See, uh, HFSS, uh, it used finite element technique, right? Okay. And CST is based upon uh, say, several other FIT uh, technique is there. So both are equally good, right? It is up to you uh, which software you want to use and where you are comfortable, right? Yes. Yeah, HFSS is uh, one of the most powerful tool. Okay. Because FEM is very, very accurate. But sometimes uh, you have to see that uh, which algorithm give you fast output. Yes. What happens in FEM that entire structure, so they discretize that entire structure to large number of some, uh, elements they are introduced to so meshing. But nowadays, uh, advanced version of this HFSS. So their manual meshing is possible that you can focus mesh, uh, dense, uh, dense meshing in a particular region or say rare meshing in other region that is possible, manually possible. So see, when you are comparing with one software tool with other, so don't go for the, uh, jump directly to a conclusion that this is good or this is bad. So it's not like that. You have to see that uh, whatever you are looking, uh, that is that feature is available <laughs> there or not. And second thing, which software tool you are comfortable, which one is giving you fast results. Sometimes a solver may be giving you very quickly a result, but that result may not be accurate. So unless you verify through uh, measurement practically, so then only then you can comment. So, but at present, both both CST as well as SFSL, they are equally powerful. Okay, thank you, sir. Sir, one question is a type by one participant, Mrs. Harshada. Is fabrication of terahertz antennas possible possible in India? Everything is possible. Depend. Things are only uh, related to that. What are the dimensions, right? Yes. What are the di what are the dimensions you are looking for? Don't think that uh, things are not possible. Everything is possible. See, but um, any answer depends upon what dimensions you are looking for. Whether you are going for uh, realization of 10 micrometer by 10 micrometer dimension or one micrometer by one micrometer dimension, right? So if dimensions are very, very small, then obviously uh, you need very sophisticated systems. Chemical etching may not be a good choice. Then there are other, uh, for example, RIE techniques are there, reactive ion etching techniques are there. So advanced uh, laboratories, basically there are a few national laboratories uh, which are established for microelectronics fabrication purpose. So there uh, you can take help, for example, in uh, 
there is a nano center national nano center in indian institute of science at bangalore so they have very good facility established by government of india so that is not a problem because he what is your objective if you are designing an antenna with few nanometer size is it always worth because this is the job of designer to reduce the requirement of uh, sophisticated equipment so you have to design uh, antenna in such a way so that it can be easily realized so you have to find out the way don't only go for miniaturization that you are using a patch metal metal patch at uh, 1 gigahertz so you can do the same thing at 100 gigahertz why to go for that and same thing you want to uh, design at 500 gigahertz you can find out some other approach apply some other approach right so if you uh, use some other approach then you can find uh, some relaxation in the dimensions you are looking for right Uh, right, sir. Uh, another question one from Mr. Suraj Sharma. Are SSPP being used for military applications? Uh, see, this is a technique, right? This is a technique which confines, provide very, very tight confinement, right? So yes. after that, uh, it is up to you whether uh, you are going to uh, use it for uh, commercial commercial chips or uh, uh, defense chips or space uh, chips. There is no such restrictions. See, this is one approach. You have you may have seen uh, this uh, figure. SSPP is not something which is alien. SSPP is just an approach. For example, here. See, if you use a micro strip line, a straight line, see, this is the way your signal confinement is there, right? But if you use uh, uh, this SSPP base, see that signal is tightly confined into your structure. You don't want to have this type of transmission line where you have leakage, because if leakage is there, it means the signal will get, get easily coupled to another track, another circuit interference will be there but in this case possibility of interference or say uh, say leakage they are minimized so that's why this approach is preferred this is an approach to solve a particular problem right we don't want interference we don't want leakage from our circuit we don't want radiation from our circuit Whatever signal we want, we want to send through this particular, uh, say, medium or guiding uh, region. So, entire signal is confined inside the guiding region. For that purpose, this particular structure, this concept that is evolved. Otherwise, whatever techniques you are using at microwave frequencies, if you use the same thing, uh at say 100 gigahertz or 200 gigahertz or one terahertz you will see that you can't do that you will not get anything at the output you will lose your signal right yes any other question meanwhile i would like to tell sir uh, professor kp Ray is here so, oh. Reza, do you want to say something to the speaker? Good evening, sir. Uh, so, uh, good evening, uh, Professor Pathak. You are able to hear me? Yeah, yeah, sir. I am able to. Yeah, so good evening. Very uh, enlightening talk. Uh, you started with uh, the basics, you know, about the various frequencies band. And then you uh, took to a level where most recent uh, research has been done. So 
it was nice to hear from you i uh, uh, i joined slightly late because uh, there was some issue uh, network so it uh, but then i i heard you throughout the lecture it was it was very uh, enlightening to hear from you so so very very nice lecture and thank you for agreeing to you know deliver the talk i hope all the students have been tremendously benefited thank you sir thank you yeah i, I was tempted to answer for ultra wide band but then uh, uh, that you managed that one quite well uh, uh, the one student who is doing her mtech project on ultra wide band antennas so uh, you had touched upon that aspect uh, in your lecture that uh, larger the bandwidth, better will be, uh, higher will be the data rate and also reproducibility of the data. So, so that's why that frequency band is, is extensively used and you don't require license for the ultra wide band. So these things you already mentioned to her. So that's good. Uh, and that Nice to uh, hear from you and hope to interact in future. Uh, Rajesh, maybe you can propose a vote of thanks. Yes, sir. If uh, any participant, if you have any question. Hello, sir. Good evening, sir. I yeah. have one question. When we are doing a power divider for a terahertz frequency means, uh, we have to give that uh, uh, isolation resistor. Uh, what will be the value, sir? It is, will be very low and how we can give that? Uh, see, uh, my suggestion is don't try directly uh, to just extend whatever you are doing at low frequency at uh, terahertz right so there are other ways because uh, getting such registers etc their size sometimes that is not feasible oh, lumped component you will not get mm -hmm. so there are better alternatives which are used other structures are there which are used okay, hmm. okay. so uh, there is no one solution you know that uh, you can apply everywhere so hmm. up to some frequency that is fine but uh, okay. when you move at millimeter wave or uh, uh, above millimeter wave frequency then hmm. in that case uh, so you have to revisit your um, concepts etc and uh, you can find some better solutions rather than simply extending this okay mm -hmm. okay sir okay sir thank you sir okay any, any other question okay. if no other question then uh, i request all participants to switch on your camera that we will thank uh, to our speaker. Hmm. Kindly switch on your cameras. Get the photograph, Rajesh. Yes, sir. I think there is some bandwidth problem. Yeah, actually, sir. Uh, yeah. Video transmission. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Issue. Right, right. So it is the limited bandwidth, so everyone may, may not be able to switch on the camera. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so no problem. So we thank our uh, today's speaker, Professor Patak, sir. He gave a uh, means a new topic to most of the participants didn't know about the sspp so now we can think for the sspp technology for not only for antenna we can use for filters 
and other components as well that he mentioned amplifier circuit as well so that we can get uh, uh, normally we get uh, insertion loss so that with the use of amplifier we can enhance the signal so this technology is very useful and uh, for variable things it is more useful we can bend our circuit and we can get a good performance from the circuit so we thank you to the speaker sir uh, thank you very much for uh, accepting our uh, invitation and give this talk i think you are not uh, well but you gave this talk so take care of yourself and uh, last word to professor pathak i'll tell him mendr that i heard you today i will tell uh, dr hemender pandey that i i had a first interaction with you today thank you you thank heard you. me uh, yeah. yeah okay 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 thank you thank you thank you sir thank you Hemen, sir. Thank Hemen you. is my batchmate <laughs> Batech, yes, <laughs> I know, and he, yeah, and uh, we have worked together. Yeah, he did, yeah, yeah. So I heard about you from him. Okay, Thank you. Okay, what's the best? Okay. Okay, so sir, if you want, uh, you can leave. But other participants, uh, I have some information for you. Okay. So, Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank Bye. you, sir. Okay, so participants, are you able to see this uh, these groups? Yes, sir. Okay, so kindly note your group. I divided you all in gr uh, six groups, so that uh, maybe from tomorrow onwards we will give some task. But uh, just note down your group, in which group you are there. Uh, I can call these names, Dr. Maya. And uh, Mr. Sandeep, Mrs. Triveni, Mr. Govind, and Mrs. Shubarna. Those are in group one. Mr. Swapnil, Mr. Jagtap Suraj Sunil Kumar, Mr. Tulsi Das, Ms. Akshara Kumari, Mr. Mohit. These five participants are in group two. Then Mrs. Sochita, Mr. Ganesh, Dr. Yogendra, Mr. Suraj Sharma are in group three, Mr. Satish Kannan, Mrs. Sheetal, Mr. Ajay, Mrs. Vaishnavi, Dr. Prachi, Mr. Shahadev are in group four. And we have Samadha, Mrs. Harshada, Mr. Dahale, Ms. Sharifa are in group five. Then the last group is group six. Participants are Dr. Hemalata Jadav, Mrs. Pranita, Dr. Somadatta, Mr. Bhimrav, Mr. Akshay, and Mrs. Vidya. So we divided you in groups so that we will give some task to you. Uh, so you can uh, work together means among your colleagues. Uh, tomorrow we we have a other lecture, so online lecture is for two and a half hour. So again, you will join that uh, link. We will give you the link so that you can join well before the time, maybe 6.50 or 6.55, you can join. Any participant, do you have any uh, query regarding the workshop or anything? No, sir. No, sir. Then, Racer, do you want to say something? Otherwise, we can close the session.
okay then uh, uh, thank you for uh, uh, attending the lecture so we will meet tomorrow on time and i will share the uh, joining link tomorrow okay so thank you all